All right, Jack Russell and Brad McGinnis here reporting from Otakon, one of the biggest uh, anime conventions or Japanese culture conventions on the East Coast here in uh, Washington, D.C. And we have a very special guest joining us today, uh, Johnny and Bosch. So. How are you doing? Fantastic. Doing, <laughs> doing great. Talking doing to great. You, so. um, let's get right into it. Um, what has been your favorite part uh, of Otakon so far? Favorite part of Otakon yeah, so far? Yeah, specifically. Like, what makes it different? Wow. What do you like about it? Like, um, um, that there are a lot of pokey stops. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a while since I've been here. But, uh, you know, it's always changing, always growing. Mm. Um, even now, it's super huge. A lot of people here. Um, and uh, I've got good staff running me around. Yes, so, I yeah. agree. <laughs> So this is primarily known as like a, a Japanese celebration festival in a right. lot of ways. Uh, what would you say is your favorite aspect of uh, Japanese culture? Maybe food, music? Oh, um, food, for sure. Food's um, great. <laughs> food is great, yeah. Um, I mean, the Japanese culture is, is awesome also. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to go and work in Japan a few times. So just being there, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I'm assuming you guys have been there. Oh, yeah. I, he yeah, has. I haven't had the pleasure yet. Oh. I, I, was, I was raised there for six years of my life. So okay. It's, yeah. Yeah. So, some of the food and like stuff are weird. How but, like, old were you? Uh, up until I was six years old. Okay. So. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. Great time. I don't remember too much when I was that young. <laughs> <laughs> so you are uh, you're a big name powerhouse in the, in the nerd community, uh, in my opinion, and uh, for a lot of other people, too. I mean, you, know, you were a Power Ranger. You've done voice acting work from you know, uh, Ichigo and Bleach to uh, in Akira and Bash from Trigun. Uh, what was it like making the switch, doing from live action and then going from anime? How was that for you? How is that? Uh, it wasn't really something that I was like, hey, you know what, I'm gonna get into voiceover. Um, uh, basically, I, it was after Power Rangers, and uh, at that time, um, there were not a lot of role, there weren't a lot of independent films, mm. in there, or at least that, uh, there wasn't a lot for a half Asian. Um, mm. And I'm half Asian, uh, uh, or it, I could play a half Asian. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, so I'm half Asian, and there weren't a lot of roles for me. And and anytime I went out there, it was usually for you know Chinese guy or Asian guy. And so I'd walk in, and I just don't look the part of Asian guy, you know. Or if I go in for a Caucasian role, which was usually on the list, mm. and it's like I'm not going to get it over Caucasian guy. Mm. So I had a tough time getting any more jobs after Power Rangers. And uh, uh, long story short, I went through a depression. I started teaching myself to play the guitar. I formed a band. And then uh, luckily the Japanese stunt team from Power Rangers wanted to shoot something. And I worked with them all the time. I, I trained with them. And they were like, hey, why don't you be the, the actor and then just do all your own stunts? And so we did that. Uh, but the camera and the audio equipment didn't communicate well. I think one was Japanese, one wasn't. And so mm -hmm. the, the audio yeah. was just static. And so I had to go in and dub myself. As I was dubbing myself, the producer walked in, heard my voice, and thought I had a decent hero voice. Oh. And then asked me to come audition for Trigun. And I auditioned for Trigun. I booked that role. That's amazing. So it was a total fluke, you know, um, me getting into the industry in general. So. I mean, your your voice is definitely one of the most recognizable in like English uh, for anime dubs. I mean, you know, Ichigo Kurosaki was the Bleach was the powerhouse show of the time. Uh, if that were to ever come back, because the, the manga goes on for a while, mm -hmm. if that were ever to come back, would you jump back onto the show? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's one of my favorite uh, roles to play. Yeah, because I mean, you have a lot of intensity as the character, and so it's. I mean, it's. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. It was fun. It definitely was, you know, and uh, I was a little bummed with the way it kind of ended. It was, it was kind of left like, felt like the budget ran out or something, you know. It was kind of a weird, I didn't know the history behind it. I just, it's like, oh wait, this is the end. Right. Um, and so hopefully with the new live action, hopefully that gets enough buzz. I hear it's actually really good. Yeah, I've been, I've been um, curious about that myself. Yeah, I hear it's really good as far as any, like, because none of the other ones I've seen have been that great. Uh, yeah, which is crazy because you think, like, it's amazing source material to draw from that could, right. you know, with the right studio, these live action shows or movies could be amazing. But just, I don't know, there's something lost in translation. Yeah. I'm curious if you, if you can circle back to like the um you know you're, you're talking about like the the plight of a uh, you know mixed race or half you know um, type. Uh, what, what what do you think 
the industry has the industry progressed in that regard of like you know doing doing better for like you know topics of inclusion and diversity like the movie is just coming out now is like crazy rich Asians or whatever mm. um, you know how, how do you think the industry is doing what's the barometer it's on that right now? definitely changed yeah then it was a much different time mm-hmm. um, now there's definitely a lot more independent stuff uh, more people are producing their own stuff um, and there's definitely now I think more voices and people are like hey wait a second <laughs> don't forget the rest of us you know yeah. so yeah it's definitely changed yeah there's much more more opportunities for yeah. sure that's a great thing i wanted to go uh back to your uh the music question uh the band was called i shine yeah correct and it's uh, i've read it, it's a mix of edge rock grunge uh alt rock pump pop um so what was your i guess you've always had a passion for music no <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, I liked music. Mm. I listened to it, but uh, I never thought, hey, I want to be, you know, in a band and, and write music. It was just, I was, I couldn't find, I couldn't find a job. And uh, I was almost homeless, basically. I was living with whoever would let me stay with them. I had two trash bags full of clothes. Wow. I had a guitar and a broken cot, and I would stay with whoever would let me stay with them. Um and uh, yeah, in that time, in that depression, I just started to teach myself to play the guitar and, and to sing and write songs, and that kind of brought out different emotions, and that kind of, you know, it was like therapy for me. Yeah, and absolutely. Then, uh, and, you know, and then through that, I ended up forming a band uh, called I Shine, which actually ended last December, you know, so 13 years, around 15 albums, um, roughly 15. You can only get about eight of them. I mean, that, that's not a bad run, though. No, no, it's not. We had over 100 songs. We uh, we did really well. Mm. Uh, we traveled the world. Um, but uh, for me, it was time to change things, you know. It was a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just time to try some new stuff. So I started a new band with one of the members from I Shine called Where Giants Fall. And we released a couple months ago our first song, and we're going to release another one here in a couple months. Oh, right. oh wow. Yeah. We're going to have to check that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah please do. About that. That's awesome. So I uh, wanted to ask, you've had some video game work, too. Yeah. Uh, how's that been? I know you're Nero in mm-hmm. Devil May Cry 4. And yeah. Definitely, I definitely got an Ichigo vibe from the, the character, or at least like the, the well, charismatic. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, Ichigo was really just my voice. You know, it wasn't something that I, I just was like, he sounded like a you know, street punk version of me <laughs> when I first listened to it. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, I do that. Um, and so going in and, and voicing Nero, it was, again, it was just uh, it was a script. You know, I, I went to Japan to do all the motion capture stuff, and it was a script, so I got to make all those choices. Whereas with the with Bleach, somebody else already did that. It's been animated, so I've just got to, if he's screaming and crying, I've got to do that and match flat. Right. You know? Whereas the, the script, it was a script. I made those choices. You know, I got to physically do those things. Um, so it was just me. And so, yes, yeah, so it was definitely this, this same voice. Yeah. If there was any video game that you could jump onto for a voice role, uh, do you have any in mind? Video game? Yeah, are you a gamer first off? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I used to be, mm. but uh, um, now I, I don't. I don't have the time to play as much right, other exactly. than like you know something that's on my phone. You know. <laughs> let, let me broaden that question a little bit. If you could like future roles, uh, is there anything off the top of your head that you'd like really want to do? Be it voice acting or live action. I don't, I don't know if there's anything specific, mm. um, but I definitely would want to continue. I, I love doing mocap. Um, oh, mocap, mocap is I mean you get to be more of that character rather than just the voice which is fine as, as well but it's, it's more fun to be there and then play that mm. character especially in a different place if you're in Japan and you're, you're, you're just in a different culture you know 